development is the best thing in this world that you could do for yourself. So sometimes when you guys don't see me on, I'm either busy um, with life, but, you know, still praying and vlogging and, um, and blogging. I blog, I try to blog at least every day. I would definitely make sure there'd be a blog up today. Um, but, you know, I, for the most part, try to make sure that I'm good, you know, internally, externally. And um, I believe that sometimes we try to be called to do certain things and trying to pour out, pour out, pour out, but there's no place to pour out from, or you're not really sitting at the feet of the father, um, getting everything that you need. And I think it's just really important to make sure that you're um, aligned to do what you're called to do. You know, sometimes even, you know, pastors, everybody just need to refuel and, and, and step back and just, you know, sit at your father's feet so you can know what the people um, need, you know, so you can pray and he can instruct you. If you continue to try to do things in your way and try to, um, you know, just come on or just do things for the, for your sake, instead of for your father's sake, you know, um, you won't really be, the Holy Spirit won't be there. You won't be led and you won't really attend the needs of the flock. It is so important that you sit at your father's feet, you know, and this is not even just for, um, you know, leaders, people who teach the word of God, because I believe that we are all called to ministry in our lives. And I believe this is informative for all of us. You have to sit at your father's feet because you want instruction. He might, you know, there might be someone on a job that needs a word from you. There might be someone at the school, you know, um, one of your friends, um, family members. And when you pray and, and seek God and fast, you know, you're clearing your mind um, of all of the garbage and gunk and flesh so you can receive from him so you can hear. And we at a day and age where we have social media, we have all these things to keep us distracted from spending that quiet time. You know, we learned, I believe I want to say Elijah, we learned from Elijah when um, the Lord spoke to him, you know, when he told him to go stand out in a mountain and it was a fire and it was an earthquake and it was in that small, still voice when the wind passed that he spoke to him. You know, um, when we're just moving, moving, moving and doing, 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 you know, you can't really hear and not even really, you can't, you can't hear from God clear. You're not, you know, there's not going to be a clear discernment, you know, because you're going to, you, you're trying to hear from him and then you're trying to uh, be validated from social media and then this and that always have our phones in our hands and there's no intimacy. There's no time where he can just pour into you. And I just think that is so important that sometimes it's okay to be missed on the scene to be few, you know, to do what God has caused you to do. And, um, you know, that is very, very important. And we must not take that lightly. We must not take that lightly. Um, our time with God, we must truly, truly, truly be led to do so. Um, all right. So I'm going to get right into the word. I'm so excited about today's word because I just know that it's going to bless someone. Um, sometimes we go through so much in life and um, sometimes we just feel like life is beating us up and we forget, we forget who we are. We forget who we are in Christ. We forget um, our stance, you know, and we just get moved by circumstances. And I just felt led in my spirit just to come on and to remind you, don't be led by your circumstances. Don't be, um, don't be led by what you see, but always stand firm on what you know. Stand firm on the word of God. God has countless times showed himself to us, you know, and sometimes when you're going through the trials, you, you forget, you know, you forget. And I just wanted to remind you today, um, not to let nothing get in the way of your devotion to God, your reverence, you loving him, you obeying him. Sometimes we just don't understand. Sometimes we don't understand why, um, 
it seems like everything was going good and, you know, uh, money was good, kids was good, life was good. And then just all like this, you know, it's chaos, tragedy and lack and all of these things. And I have come to learn that, some, you know, sometimes it's spiritual warfare and it is the devil. But most times, most times, guys, and listen clearly, most times it is God trying to teach you something, trying to prune you, trying to get um, your attention. We learned in John that um, the Lord prunes those that he loves, those that he has an assignment for, those that, um, you know, the remnant that he, you know, there's things that he wants you to do that he will prune you, you know, there will be, there will be some times that, um, you just feel alone. You just feel like, you know, overlooked, you know, and these are the times that you want to hold on to God. You want to hold on to Jesus word. You want to know that, you know, that you know who you are. Um, there's some seasons that he's hiding you as he's preparing you and you're not being overlooked. He's just preparing you. And you just, you want to hold on to the word of God because that's, what's going to keep you grounded. That's, what's going to keep you at comfort. That's what's going to keep you at rest because Jesus said, you know, his yoke is easy. He said to lay your burdens down to him and to do, and to do so when you're going through trials and tribulations, you have to remember who you are. I, I, I'm going to pull up that scripture when Jesus told the disciples that, um, they were going to the other side. I believe that's in Luke. He said that they were going to the other side. And as soon as he said they were going to the other side, um, he fell asleep. Okay. He rested, he fell asleep, but the disciples wasn't and a storm arose and the water started coming into the boat and they immediately panicked and woke him up. Like, Oh my gosh, Jesus, we're about to, we're about to die. The boat's going to sink. And the first thing Jesus said, when he woke up, he looked at them and said, Oh yeah, little faith and rebuked the storm. And we have to remember when you listen to that and you read that, you have to remember that the first thing Jesus said before they got into that boat, that they was going to the other side. So that teaches us, that teaches us in the word of God, that when God gives you a word and when he says that something is going to manifest, good morning, when he says that something's going to manifest, that you have a adversary out there to take that word from you. That's why as soon as Jesus said, we're going to the other side, no quicker than they got in that boat, the boat started sinking, storms started coming. And the devil will try to make you feel like it's something that you're doing. It's something that you're lacking. And it's not the case. It's just that Jesus said, you're going to the other side. Jesus has spoken. So he's a liar. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Good morning, sis. So what he does is he intimidates you. So we already know that Jesus said, that they were going to the other side. So once Jesus said that, it was a done deal. That's why the first thing that Jesus did when he got in the boat is he went to sleep. That is a vivid picture of him resting, that the Lord is trying to show us that God gives you a word, rest on that word. So he's resting in the boat, and now the boat is sinking. The boat is sinking. The water is coming. The storm is coming. So the disciples is like, hold up. Oh my gosh, they're getting worried. And Jesus is resting. So of course, the first thing they do is wake him up. And he's like, oh, the a little faith. And that's just to remind us that when God gives you a word, when he tells you that healing coming, when he tells you that, when he assures you that restoration or whatever it is, that is coming. And he said it, then that's what it is. If Jesus said that they were getting on the other side, then that's what it is. Cause guess what? At the end of the day, oh, I feel the Holy spirit on this. At the end of the day, Jesus had a promise from God that he had to endure some things and he had to get on that cross for us. So we know that he could not have died or perished in that storm. You understand what I'm saying to you? He could not have perished in that storm. But those that were in the boat, it seemed like they were going to perish at that moment. And that's why the first thing that Jesus said was, oh, the of little faith. He wanted to remind you that if I said it, it's going to come to pass. Oh my goodness, I feel God. And this is for me too. I wanted to come from Romans, but I, I just... I want to, I want to read that scripture to you. Cause I, I want you to, I want you to get it for yourselves. I want you to get it for yourselves. If Jesus says it, 
if Jesus says it, then, then, then that's what it is. And I th really just think that we have to stop. We have to stop letting um, trials and tribulations deteriorate us from our walk um, to make us feel like, to make us feel like um, we're not where we're supposed to be. We, we're, we're, you're where you're supposed to be. You're where you're supposed to be. But, you know, you just have to realize that there is an adversary looking to take you out. But if Jesus gave you a promise and if Jesus said it, then that's what it is. And he said, listen, we're going to the other side. We're going to the other side. And I just, I just really, you know, um, I, I got the scripture for Romans that I want to, um, read to you, but I just think that for, I don't know when God led me to come on is so many of us are just going through so much right now. And, um, we need words of encouragement because somehow we're mistaking warfare we're, we're mistaking warfare and we're mistaking pruning for um, God's neglect. We feeling like Jesus, you know, is neglecting us. We feel like, um, we feel like God, you know, isn't answering our prayers. He isn't there. And, and it's just, it's not the case. It's, it's not the case. Um, sometimes it's warfare, you know, sometimes it's the enemy. Jesus said they were going to the other side. As soon as he said they were going to the other side, here comes the storm. And then sometimes it's pruning. You know, he said it in John that he prunes those, he edifies those that he has called. He's not, listen, God is not a, a, a God. He doesn't think like us. And Isaiah says his thoughts and his plans and his ways are not like our ways. We're so simple minded when we think about life and, and, and the things of God. When God thinks, first of all, God is a God that his words are powerful. Everything that he does is strategic. So he's not going to throw you out somewhere and you're not fully prepared. Some of us think that we're so fully prepared. And, and, and this is for me. You know, I'm talking to me too. We think that we're so fully prepared that we have arrived and you're not. As soon as somebody say something wrong to you, you ticked off. And, you know, there's, there's, so, many, there's so many little elements too to the calling. There's little elements too that he's trying to mold. And, and, and we get caught up. We get caught up and, and it's not the case. It's not the case. It, it's not, God would never tell you to get your act together, to come to him and then leave you. So now you change your life around. You ain't, you know, cussing, drinking, sexing and all of these things that the world has you to do. But now it seems like all hell is against you. And I know it seems like as soon as you got things right, as soon as you try to do things right the way the Bible says, it seemed like all hell came against you. And yes, sometimes it is spiritual warfare. Yes, sometimes it is the devil because he does not want you to receive the promise. But most of the time, it's God. He's testing you. He's trying to see if you're ready for the big thing. He's trying to prune you. He's trying to remove some things out of your life that you don't need. And if you're not grounded in the word, you will look at it as being overlooked. You will look at it as being um, spiritually hurt and neglected and, and just all of the things that your flesh and the enemy wants you to think. And I'm here to tell you today that it's not the case. It's, it's, it's totally, it's totally not the case. I, before I get started on Romans, let me, let me look this up because I really want to, I really want to share this with you. Because I just, I, I believe that, um, you know, we're living in a time that we're doing everything under the sun except reading the word of God. And what happens with that is when trials and tribulations come, you're shaking because you have nothing to stand off of. You have nothing, you have nothing to prove yourself to be assured, you know, and um, some of us are, some of us are really, um, we're really going off of what mama and them said, you know, um, we're going off of all of the things that other people said. <laughs> and, and we got to be careful with that. We got to be careful with that because if you're not grounded in the word, you can't stand firm. 
If you're not grounded in the word and you don't know little scriptures like the one I'm, uh, I'm about to read to you about Jesus saying they're going to the other side and then a storm arose. And, you know, if you don't know these things, you have nothing to stand off of. And, um, and that's just what it is. Jesus said. It's just so much trying to come against me this morning. But you know what? Let's go to the Jesus. I'm just going to keep on going and do what I said because I know that spiritual warfare is real. I know that the enemy, you know, he, he doesn't want you to keep going. He wants me to be all crying and, and, and he wants me to be all in my feelings and Nobody got time for that, okay? Because now everything, I, I'm looking for this scripture. I can't get it. Phone is acting up. There was, you know, stuff getting on. And that's, that's like what I'm trying to say to you. Going to the other side, okay? Going to the other side. It's, it's just always something trying to deteriorate you and stop you from going to the other side. And you just got to... You just got to stand tall and know who you are. I really want to read this to you. I, I mean, I gave you, I gave you the, see you later, baby. Have a great day. I gave you my interpretation, but I really want to, I really wanted to read it to you and I'm, because I'm like Russian too. Uh, let's see. And that's my fault too, because I should have had it out already. Uh, oh goodness, just bear with me. I can't believe my phone is acting up, but can you? Um, Because I, this is, this is really, this, this will really bless somebody when you, when you really hear this. Are you kidding me? I can't believe this. Like, I'm really can't pull this up right now. It's all right. I'm going to read, I'm going to read what I have for us. And then I will, um, I will come to that. I'm all morning. It's just all morning. It's just everything trying to stop me from getting what I need. It's frustrating. It's almost frustrating. But you know, when when you have stuff that's trying to stop you from doing what you got, what you got to do, you just got to keep going. Okay. I knew it was Luke eight. The Holy Spirit kept saying Luke eight. And I was in Luke 8, and I just couldn't find it. Oh, that's why I love the Holy Spirit. Because you know what, guys? That's what I should have did. The Holy Spirit kept saying Luke 8, and I should have just went to Luke 8 and read down Luke 8. That's a lesson for somebody. I'm trying to tell the, I'm trying to neglect what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Isn't that funny? Okay, let's see. It says Luke 8. Okay, Luke 8, 22. I love, oh, I love you, Father, because the Holy Spirit kept saying Luke 8, and I kept looking down at Luke 8, and I just kept overlooking it, overlooking it, instead of just, all right. So one day Jesus said this, this is, I'm reading from the NIV study Bible, guys. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Remember what I said about he gave a word. He gave a word. He said, let's go to the other side. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squirrel came down on the lake, so the, the, so the boat was swamped, and they were in great dan danger. Now, when you, um, when you read, that's why I love the New King James Version, but it's in my room. When you, when you read it from the New King James Version, it says that uh, how water was coming in the boat, and the boat was being flooded. And it says, the disciples went and woke him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm subdued, 
and all the and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked the disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. And what I want, what, remember what I was telling you when I was telling you guys about this? What I want you to focus on, where I want you to zoom your attention on, is to he said, Let's go to the other side. That was a word. That was a word. That was a promise. Let's go to the other side. And as soon as Jesus said, let's go to the other side, a storm comes. As soon as Jesus says, get that man out your bed, or uh, uh, anxiety hits. All of a sudden your bills is doing, and this is the man that was helping you with your bills, or or the woman, or 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 as soon as you, as soon as you say, I'm gonna clear out my life and I'm gonna do things right, I get sick. All my family is against me. People are lying on me, talking about me, gossiping about me. And you wondering, and you're saying to yourself, what am I doing? What am I doing that's wrong? And you got to realize you're not doing anything wrong. But you have an adversary out there that doesn't have no power to take it from you. So the only power that he has, come on, Holy Spirit, is to distract you and discourage you from moving forward to the other side. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's his only power is to distract you and discourage you. That's why the Bible teaches us to renew our mind, to hold on to the word of God, to hold on to the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in you. And don't do it your own way. Like how the Holy Spirit is prompting me and saying, Luke 8, Luke 8, Luke 8, and I'm going, and I'm wasting time looking through the scriptures, looking through the scriptures, not being single pointed to what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit said Luke 8. So if I would have went down and just started reading from Luke 8, I would have found it on Luke 8, um, chapter, um, Luke 8, chapter 8, verse 22. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to know and you got to listen to instruction and know who you are. Don't try to do it in your own way. And I love how the Holy Spirit works, how he used something as little as me looking for a scripture just now. Here I am trying to do it in my own way and overlooking that the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you guys, I, I see Luke 8, I, I can hear it in my mind, but I'm still going, uh-huh, guys, steady talking, missing it, wasting time. And that's what some of us are doing. We're steady missing it, wasting time because we're so conditioned to overlook and do things in our own way and not even realizing that something as little as that can be distraction. Because what was I saying as I was saying to y'all? Yeah, y'all, this morning it's just been distraction and he's just trying. I couldn't get the thing up in the phone, so I was trying to do that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? How something so little and insignificant is so significant to our walk? But you have to be mindful. You have to be a. You have to be woke, or you'll miss it. Jesus said, "Let's go to the other side." And the storm came. Jesus told you to start that ministry. Jesus told you to write that book. Jesus told you to leave that job. Jesus told you to go talk to this person and do this and do that. And then something tries to tell you, "Don't do it." Distractions. But we know that. He, they, we know that they could not have died in that boat because we know that he had to endure some things and he had to go to the cross. That's why the first thing that he said, New King James um, Version and King James Version says, he says, oh, ye of little faith. And here in the NIV, he said, where's your faith? Why are you waking me? Why are you waking me talking about the boat is flooding? We serve a supernatural God. Thank you, Jesus. That no matter what, even if God had to elevate that boat or, and, and miraculously evaporate the water out that boat, he wouldn't have did it because he gave a word that they were going to the other side. Jesus came for a purpose, so he couldn't die in that boat. 
Or if something would have happened, he would have resurrected them just like that. Why? Because he had a purpose. There was a purpose for Jesus coming and walking the earth. You have a purpose. I have a purpose. So nothing can come between that. Okay? Nothing could come between you and God. And then here comes, and I'm going to end it with this, the scripture that I had for you. How we're more than conquerors. So you remember that. You have a word. There's a promise attached to you. That's why you're still here. That's why you were born. God has plans to prosper you. Everything was already predestined for you. And I, all we're doing is walking into that thing. But you got to be confident in who you serve in. You got to be confident in who you are. You got to be confident and know that you're getting to the other side. If he said it, then that's what it is. And let nothing stop you from knowing that. Nothing. I'm going to, I'm reading from Romans 8. Um, I'm just going to read from Romans 8, 28 and down. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. That goes into what I was saying, that nothing, though I thought it was a distraction and the Holy Spirit is saying, Luke 8, Luke 8, and I'm overlooking it and this and third, God worked that out for his good that I just incorporated that to the teaching about not being attentive not listening, not being confident, doing things your own way. For those who knew, he also predestined. That's what I just said. Everything is already done. You're just walking into it. So for those that he called, not only are things that's trying to distract you, not only that, see, the, the enemy was trying to take them out, right, in the boat and trying to discourage them and make them feel like they weren't going to the other side, but God allowed it and used it and it was able to be, to meet the records of the book. The, 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 the good book says that the word of God is, and, and, and everything that the disciples and apostles and the prophets, that all things of God breath that is in this Bible to instruct, to rebuke, to correct. So if God had allowed that to be in the word, that they were supposed to go to the other side and the enemy come in the road. He allowed that to be documented and to be recorded for our sake, to work it out for our walk, to let you know that when God gives you a promise and Jesus says something, it will be done. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. For those for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his sons, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And those are the pruning stages. Those are the times that he's justifying you. He's glorifying you. He's getting some things out of you. And you're feeling like uh, all hell is raising against you. You're feeling neglected and alone and overlooked. But Jesus is just trying to mold you and pull things out of you and move things away from you and teach you to grow. He's trying to edify you because he's using you. You represent the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You represent the kingdom. You represent the, your calling. Who you are called to be edifies the kingdom. He cannot look stupid. He cannot lie. He cannot use you. And you're not fully prepared. He cannot use you. And, 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 and you humiliate the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he will prune you and, 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 and do some things so you can edify the kingdom. So this time that you're feeling neglected, you're feeling overlooked, you're feeling like all hell is raising against you. He's just molding you. So that people... When they see, because listen, once you start saying, good morning, sis, once you start saying that you're walking with God and that you're doing some things for God and all these things, now people are watching you. People are watching you. And you have an enemy that wants to distract you and make you look stupid. So you, so, so, so God, he's going to take the time to prune you and mold you, like John says, to get things right. 
so he can so he can perfect his perfect will for your life so you can be ready for the task that's why we're in, we're in the wilderness and we're going through things and, and and we're crying you know i know even with myself and and when i'm going through things and i'm crying and i'm and i'm saying god you know take me out of this thing and you know remove this thing from me and it seems like he's silent. It seems like he's not moving. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. It seems like he's silent. It seems like uh, he's overlooking me and everybody's getting blessed and everybody's succeeding. And I'm like, why me? And I, and I still can't find a way to feed my children. I still can't sell enough books or sell enough t-shirts. But this person over here just dropped the book and it's selling and this and that and the third. And God is trying to say, listen, focus on me. I'm trying to prune and mold you for your task. Because what I got for you, I need you to get out of you. See, because if you were so focused on God, circumstances couldn't move you. You wouldn't be moved by that. You wouldn't be crying and saying, oh, God, where are you at? Because you would know who you are. You're going to the other side. He said you're going to the other side. Then that's what it is. There is never his, listen, God is not a God that he should lie. If you never make it to the other side, it is because of your doing. See, if Jesus wasn't in that boat, and I'm going to say it like this. If Jesus wasn't in that boat and the storm was coming and it was sinking and, and, and the adversary is trying to shake the boat and he got water coming on this boat and he's trying to discourage them. The first thing human, human mind would tell you to do, especially those who can swim and those who can't, they're going to grab a life jacket. They're going to jump out of the boat. Thank you, Jesus, for this. They're going to jump out of the boat and miss the promise. And miss the timing. Do you understand? Oh, this is, if this ain't for you guys, this is for me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It is all designed to discourage you. He cannot take it. He cannot literally stop it. Once God says something, he can't stop it. Think about Job. God gave, uh, um, gave the devil, uh, uh, he said, you can do whatever you want. Just don't kill him. Just don't touch him. So he afflicted him. He did all this other stuff, but he couldn't take him down. He cannot stop. Stop God's plan for you. The only way that he can stop it is through you because we have the, we have the spirit of free will. Okay. So if, 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 if all this stuff comes, it's all, you're the only person that can stop you. Cause see the plan is going to go He'll Call somebody up to do what he called you to do. He'll call somebody up to do it. Only you can stop you. And that's why you have to be grounded. That's why you have to be grounded in your word. That's why you have to be grounded and know who God is. So when the world is against you, when things ain't adding up and things look crazy, you got to know that you 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 know that you're going to the other side. That you're going to get your, your kids is going to, you're going to get your kid back. Your kid is going to come out that fire. Your finances is going to come back. Your husband is going to come to his senses. Your wife is going to come to her senses. The boss is going to stop acting crazy. Your, your sales are going to happen. The house is, all of these things is going to happen. And if it doesn't, then that meant it wasn't in the plan. But he will confirm some things to you and tell you, listen, this is not my plan. But if he told you and spoke it and said that this is what it is, then this is what it is. You have to hold, stand your ground on that. Despite what it looks like. That's why the word of God teaches us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because God is, listen. You know, that's why I love direct marketing because they teaches you. It's so much self-development with direct market, y'all. And people try to be like, oh, it's a scheme, it's a pyramid, and this, that, and the third. So is work, okay? Everybody's trying to get to the CEO and, and, and many don't. But anyway, they teach you an MLM about self-development. You understand what I'm saying to you? And they teach you about um, clues, 
is, is, is to, to become successful. Success leaves clues. And it's the same thing with the word of God. The word of God leaves clues and metaphors and parables, but you got to keep your mind open or you'll miss it. Or you'll miss it. God would never teach us to walk by faith and not by sight. And he would never tell us these things if everything was going to be smooth sailing, if everything was going to seem like it go as planned, if the enemy wasn't going to try to distract it. So that's God's way of subliminally telling us, listen, oh, this is for me. I'm preaching to me. Listen, it looks crazy. It looks like all hell is raising against you. It looks like what I promised you is not going to manifest. But I'm telling you, daughter and son, that I promised you some things that is going to come to pass. But you got to keep the faith. You got to keep walking. You got to not look at what the circumstances look like. You got to not look like all hell is coming against you. You got to not look at these things and say that this is the destination and say that this is what it is. You got to press forward. You got to know that I told you that you're going to have some things that I promised it to you and that's what it is. You got to know it. You got to know it. You got to know it deep down in here. You got to eat, drink, feel this thing. You got to. You got to. You got to. Let's finish. Verse 30. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. I'm reading from Romans 8. Um, now we have gone to verse 31. What, this is the NIV study Bible. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can stand against us? Oh, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. If God is for you, who can stand against you? See, when God said, when we read out of Luke 8, 22, and God, and, and Jesus said, our Lord and Savior said, I'm going, we're going to the other side. No matter what happened in, and to that boat, they was going to the other side. Why? Because Jesus spoke it. Jesus was for them and he was with them. If God is for you, who can stand against you? If God is for you, nothing can come against you. It can't. It won't manifest. It won't. It won't. But you got to believe it won't. You got to know who you are. You got to know that that promise is going to happen no matter what. Stand your ground. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who could be against us? He who do not Spare, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? That goes your promise. Now you see why you got to stay in the word of God. Do you see? There goes your promise. He said, not only did I prune you and I justified in you and I'm molding you. And despite what things look like, who, if God is for you, who could be against you? Paul is saying he's for you. And then here he says, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Not some things, not little things, not big things. He said, all things. Thank you, God, for this word. All things. Food is coming. Bills are going to be paid. Husband and marriage is going to be restored. Children is going to come back home. The job is going to come. The, the boss is going to get off your back. The, the house is coming. The mindset is coming. The healing is coming. The pressing is leaving because he promised you a sane mind. He promised you peace and abundance. It's coming because he said that I will give you all things. Not some, all, 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 all. But you got a devil out there trying to convince you that he ain't trying to do nothing. That what you see is what you get. And that's not what our father teaches us. That's not what our Abba says. Because it's what you can't see is what you get. What you can't see is what you get. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 33. Who will bring any charge against them who God has chosen? Who could come against you? Who could say that you ain't, that this is not what the promise is? And, and this, if this is what God called you to do, 
That's like me. I don't care what nobody say. Who called her up to teach this and that and the third? This is what God has called me to do. He has called me to be the remnant. He has cleared the path for me to do so. Who can bring charge against me? Who can say this is not what I'm called to do? Nobody has the authority to do that but Jesus himself, the true judge. Is it, is it, is it, um, it is God who justifies who he is that condemns. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future or any powers, neither height nor death nor anything else in, in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, I'm asking you right now to heal the minds. Lord, I'm asking you right now to remove the anxiety. Lord, I'm asking you right now to give clarity and discernment and give, give a certainty in the spirit. Let them know and touch them and let them know that it's going to be all right. Including myself, Jesus. Paul said, Nothing can separate you. No trial, no tribulation, no nakedness, no famine, no lack, no nothing, no height, no nothing, 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 nothing. You're predestined. It's already done. You're just walking into it. Yes, it looks crazy. Yes, it looks like all oh, hell is coming to get you. Yes, it looks like things are not adding up and money is not adding up. But that's not what it is. He said all things he will give you. That's why it teaches us to seek you first, the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom and what all things will be added. All things. All things. You have a promise. You have a promise. You have a promise. Oh, God. You have a promise. Stop letting life beat you up. Stop letting the devil trick you into thinking anything else. You have a promise. You will call. You're in the right direction. This was so in my spirit to bring forth. That's why in the beginning, I, I those that came on late, I encourage you to rewind this thing when you have time and, and really listen and, and meditate on what the Holy Spirit spoke and taught through me. That's why it's so important, it's pivotal that you spend time and sit at your father's feet. So when things come, you will be confident. That's why Paul said, listen, I'm convinced. He said, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I'm, I'm sold out. I, David said that he never seen the righteous forsaken and begging for bread. See, the thing is, oh, oh, hallelujah. I just felt this in the Holy Spirit. You begging, you begging. You begging. Yeah, pride comes before a man fall. But God would tell you and he would lead you to where you need to go if he want, if he has something, you know, that somebody had for you. But nine out of ten is you begging. You're not even trusting him. When the widow was down to her last, and Elijah came and she was prepared for her and her baby to die. And he said, No, bake me, bake this cake, and then and then then, then you have for yourself. And they kept eating. See, you just got to trust him to provide. We look at him as a cliche, as a post, 
as a mean. Oh, the, the man upstairs. Oh, uh, the man above. Oh, God is good. He's doing this. But when trials and tribulations come and the, real, and, the, and the real stuff comes to really put your money where your mouth is, you, your knees buckle because you're not fully grounded. You're not fully grounded in the word to know that there is power. It's power in him. You have authority to speak things, to speak life, to tell the devil to get up off your things. That's why when that boat was rocking, Jesus knew it was spiritual warfare and he rebuked the waters. He used his authority because he knew that his father told him he's going to the other side. Peace be still. Sometimes you got to speak to your situation. Listen, man, I, devil, I know this is you. I know what God told me to do. Or God, you got me going through this. What are you trying to teach me? Ask questions like, like PT said, Pastor Torre said, ask questions. What are you trying to teach me, God? Because I told you most of the times, yeah, there's spiritual warfare, but most of the times it's God allowing certain things to happen because he's trying to raise you up to a higher standard. How long are you going to keep drinking milk when he's trying to give you meat? Remember, we are supposed to be going from glory to glory to glory. You are supposed to be excelling. And we think, because the world makes us think that is selling is a house, a car, a marriage, children, when it is self-development. Excelling is you becoming a better you. And then all these other things will come. That's what this selling is, you becoming better. You becoming a better person where you don't got to address everything. You don't got to address everything. Every little thing don't have to aggravate you. you. You don't have to be better. You can pray for your enemy. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I pray that this blessed you. I pray that you get it. If you have to keep rewinding this thing and, 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 and just letting it just pour into you, pour into your spirit, don't get discouraged. It's designed for you to forfeit your promise. That's the only way you won't go to the other side. If you forfeit, if you have lack of faith. For those who haven't, I have a mobile app. It is free. Um, for Android, um, it's Google Play. For um, um, iPhone, is um, the App Store. You go and you search Pray to Slay by me, Fallon Brown. Pray to Slay. You put in Pray to Slay. We are growing and we're like 600 deep on this app. Um, people, there's a prayer part. People are sharing some intimate things. And it's just amazing what God is doing through us through Pray to Slay. So I want to encourage you guys, if you haven't, go ahead and download Pray to Slay. It is free. Um, for those who don't have my book or my t-shirt, you can um, purchase it on the Shop Now tab at Pray to Slay. Or I plug in my website. You can go to FallonBrownPublishing.com. Grab my book, guys. I can't express I made sure it was intentionally not long. It's like 60 pages. So you can really grasp what's in here. I talk about everything. This, when you struggling with depression, you struggling with anxiety, you struggling with insecurity, you struggling with abandonment issues, everything you can think of, how to forgive, sex, homosexuality, money, anything you can think of, infidelity, I was real and I was transparent, but I knew that it was needed. And this is my baby. This is my baby. Um, FallonBrownPublishing.com. We have the t-shirts. I pray to say, I love these shirts. Everybody say these shirts are so pretty. We, as you can see, this is, um, this is an extra large or two X. This is a two X. So I have plus sizes and everything. These are all for my queens. I'm going to have some for the men soon, but listen, honey, you pray to slay. You pray to slay every demon, every warlock. Listen, support. Support the movement. Support. Especially if, if you follow my ministry and you constantly getting fed, support. Um, on the website, on the first page, when you scroll down, there's a donation button. Um, so many people hit me up and they say that God led them and they want to be a blessing to me. So I usually send them my PayPal or I tell them to go on to the website. You can donate. There's a donation button. If you feel that, donate. 
Um, I want to encourage you to get the t-shirt and to get the books. I pray over an uh, impartation over all my merchandise. So I pray that you will receive the overcoming and confident spirit that God has given you. So it's partated on you. I believe that. I, I, I believe that. Um, I'm going to pray for you because I, I just really feel in my spirit. And I know that's why God had me bring this forth. That especially those that are obedient, um, many are the afflictions of the righteous. You have to stay in your word. I can't, I just can't stress the importance of staying in your word because it just feeds you when, when life comes and try to kick you down. The more you walk, the more he's coming against you. The more you walk, the more your mind is trying to come against you. And because you have to realize to not be carnal minded and to be spiritual minded is to go against everything that the world is doing. See, the world would tell you, girl, you got to test drive that man. You know, test drive that car before you drive. What you mean that you waiting and you're not trying to have sex with that man? No, girl, you got to tap that before. No, see. Oh, you stressed out, girl. Here, smoke this joint. Son, smoke this, smoke this joint, son. Drink this liquor. Let's go to the club. Da, da, da. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the world, oh, you got to have success, success to be happy. And that's why you have all these rich people blowing their heads off because they're not happy. They're not sustained because they don't have that peace from Abba. You have to realize to walk spiritually, to be conjoined with God, you're going against everything the enemy's saying, everything that the world is saying. Oh, when lack is coming in and God is putting in your spirit to wait on him and don't be begging and, and, and having sob stories so somebody can get you out of this mess, but maybe God is trying to teach you something in this mess and he wants you to hold on to him and he wants you to trust him that he will work all things out and that he will give you all things. The world would tell you, uh-uh, girl, you better go ahead and get that money in this and third. And God is just saying, be still. I got you. I got you, I got you. And this is for those that some of us, like me, he called you out the job and told you to start the business and do certain things. And you don't see certain things manifesting. You're scared and you're trying to, you're trying to uh, compare your life to the internet because you got to realize that people are only post posting their best and their highlights. They're taking a hundred pictures to post that one picture and they're putting filters and this and that. And you're getting so caught up. And God is saying, just listen to me. A small, still voice. Oh my God. Let me pray. I told you before I covered my head when I prayed. I was led to do so. That's why when you, especially in the Pentecostal church, you used to see them with the prayer cloths because you, you should cover your head. See, I love how God, even in a new age, the precepts and stuff still remain the same. God, holiness is still right, right, righteousness. Certain things are still in decency and in order. Holy Spirit, just come. Holy Spirit, come speak through me right now as I pray. Reveal to me the things that your people need. Show me what your people need. Speak it to me as I pray for them, Father God. Meet everyone right where they are. Pierce their soul with the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the overflow. Give them peace, Father God. Lord, I come to you right now, Father God, and I just thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to get up this morning to grace me and, and call me to speak your word, speak the truth. Father God, I pray that whatever need that anyone needs that is watching this, that is under my voice. Father, I pray that you give them, that you meet them right where they are. I pray that you restore the families, that you restore the relationships. I pray that you give them confidence to walk into the authority that you have given them, that you remove insecurity. Father God, I pray that you give them a peace a peace that surpasses all understanding to know and to be confident that this child too shall pass, that whatever that they're going through, this too shall pass, that I hear the Holy Spirit and this can just be for me as well too, saying, I'm just trying to raise you up. I'm just trying to mold you. I'm just trying to birth a new you. And see, in order for me to birth a new you, I got to remove some things. I got to prune you. I got to remove that guy. I got to remove that woman. I got to give you a little lack so you can know that I am the sufficient one. 
Some of you are just looking into your bank account. Some of you actually go and you pull up your phone and you're always, oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. You're always looking in your account because you feel so secure in your account. And God is saying, I'm removing some things, not to be mean and, 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 and to, to abuse you, but to show you that I am the source that it all comes from me, that you're putting your hope and your power in this thing when it should be in me. Some, God, some of you are just going through things because he's using you to, to show the other person that's watching you that it's possible. Some of you are going through things not even for you, but for the person that is watching. And he's saying, count it all in joy that I got your back. That is I. I am the same today as I was yesterday. I am the same that I was to Abraham. That this too shall pass. I just keep hearing in the spirit, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Oh, daughter, I love you. Daughter, I trust you. Daughter, I have called you. I have called you. You are, you are right where you need to be. You are right where you need to be. Stop getting distracted. Son, stop letting your ego come and, and, and deteriorate you and stop you from the call. Keep walking straight. They're only trying to humiliate you and ridicule you because secretly they're jealous of you and what I placed inside of you. Thus say the Lord, trust me. Walk the narrow path that leads to righteousness in a wide, leads to destruction. Holy means to be set apart. He said, I have set you apart. So yes, you're living differently. Yes, but I have called you to do so. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Amen. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I keep hearing him say, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Acknowledge me, trust me, trust me. Oh, I just, uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you, I'm like holding back the tears, y'all, because, see, you don't know, and I'm real, I don't fake the front and, and front like it's this and that, you know, so much is required, much is given, and much is required to what is given, and like I said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. There's so much that I that I go through. There's so much. Look at the things that you do know of what I go through. And, and you say to yourself, how she's still standing, the word of God, that's how. And even I, sometimes I just get so discouraged and question myself, like, is this what it is? And and I have to remind myself through the word of God. That's why when you hear me teach, I, I always say, well, this ain't for you, it's for me, because I receive it too. I never am acting like I'm somebody that I'm not and I'm, you know, here and you there. It's no, you know, everybody's a work in process and trying to get it right, though I don't live in sin anymore. But you know what? I believe it's James. It teaches us that when you know to do something and you don't do it, that is sin. So you may not be sleeping around, but you may be worrying. That's sin. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says when you know to do something and you don't do it, so that's sin. So we all fall short of the glory. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to trust God and you just got to take him up for his word. And you just got to be confident in that. When you seeing people that are founded and grounded on the word of God, and it looks like they're winning, baby, please know that all hell have raged against them. Please know that they went through it. But the thing is, they allowed God to take them through it. They didn't get stuck. They trusted him. And because they trusted him, they reaped harvest like no other. That's why I try to encourage you, even if it's not my book, it's the Bible. Um, Heather Lindsay, it's another book called Silent Seasons. I just, I reread it again yesterday. It is amazing. Um, HeatherLindsay.com. Buy that book too. Read. Start working on self-development. I don't, I can't even tell you what happened to the power. Sometimes I just catch up on it through the internet because I hear people talking about it. I can't tell you about housewives and all this stuff no more. I have and love it hip hop. I can't tell you because I'm studying what I'm trying to do. I'm studying people that's winning. You know, I, I'm in world ventures. So I'm studying direct marketing and I'm studying my Bible and 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm doing self-development. God called me to vlog, so I study vloggers. That I Most of the time, if I'm not watching my spiritual stuff or self-development stuff, I'm watching vloggers. Like, change. It's time for you to shift a little bit. Start. Give God something to work with. Amen. And even if not, he will work with what you, what you are, what he got in you, and he would change you. But start holding on to that change. Some of you are trying to hold on to the same things because it feels comfortable and you have to get into that stage of the unknown. You have to be uncomfortable for a little bit it's in order to grow, in order to become what he called you to become. Amen. So I pray that this blessed you. Have a blessed day. This morning has set the tone for your day to clear and decree that you're having a blessed day. Receive this word. Receive all of the promises of God. God bless you. Goodbye.